So this case is a 71-year-old female patient with no previous relevant medical history. She came to the emergency department 48 hours ago. She had an acute onset of a severe headache. And at the emergency department, she rapidly developed a deep coma. She was then diagnosed uh, in the CT scan of a acute subarachnoid hemorrhage. So now the situation is 24 hours later. She has a moderate respiratory failure due to a bronchospiratory pneumonia. We are ventilating the patient with conventional long protective mechanical ventilation. She is in a pressure control mode with a peak level of eight centimeters of water. And the driving pressure is nine. The plateau pressure is 17 and she were using a tidal volume of 6 ml per kilogram predicted body weight. And this leads to a quite stable respiratory condition. She has a compliance of 33, 34, and her oxygenation is, uh, is correct. She has a cell ratio of 99% and a good level of CO2, which is important to maintain during this phase of the disease. So now we are going to uh, apply a long protective ventilation strategy based on the open lung concept. For this, we will use an automated recruitment tool. It's called the ASRM, which stands for Automatic Stepwise Recruit Maneuver, which is a software installed in the, in the ventilator. To access the software, we just press maneuvers. So then we have several options, and we will uh, select the ASRM, the Sequential Recruit Maneuver. This will take us to the main screen where we can adjust the settings and we have a, a scheme of the uh, entire process of the recruit maneuver in its different steps and phases. We have a first incremental uh, phase where we increase the peak level in a stepwise fashion in order to prepare the lung for the actual recruitment maneuver. The recruit maneuver is here on top. And we select the recruitment pressures and the time we will spend at that pressure level. Then immediately after the recruit maneuver is finished, the system will switch to the next phase, which is the decremental peak trial. For this, the, the ventilator will change to a volume control mode from the pressure control mode that was at the beginning. And during this phase, the peak will be stepwise decreased in two centimeters of water step. Dynamic compliance will be measured on a breath by breath basis. And we will follow the behavior in compliance, looking for the maximum compliance during this decrement of trials. So maximum compliance is the point at which the most dependent part of the lung starts to collapse, and it corresponds to the closing pressure. And with this information, the system can give a recommendation of the optimum peak, which will be set two centimeters of water above the closing pressure or the point of maximum compliance. If this is recognized by the system, then it immediately will follow to the next step, which is a new recruit maneuver after switching again to a pressure control ventilation mode. The same type of maneuver will be performed as the first one. And then finally, the system will return to the previous settings, but with a new selected level of PEEP that has been identified automatically by the uh, recruitment tool. So next thing we need to do is to set our parameters for the recruit maneuver. First, we will select the pressure that we will apply during the recruit maneuver. It's now by default at 40. We will increase to 45 for this particular patient. Next, we will select the level of PEEP, and this will de determine the, um, the driving pressure that will be used during the recruit maneuver. And we will maintain a driving pressure of 20, so the PEEP of 25 is correct. Then we will select the rate during the entire recruit maneuver and we'll select it to 10 breaths per minute. The next thing we need to um, select is the magnitude of the peep steps during the first incremental phase. We will select steps of five centimeters of water and they will be maintained for five breaths, which at this rate means that it will stay 30 seconds at each level. Finally, we need to select the time we want to spend at the maximum recruitment pressures. And this is also really related to the uh, rate that we have selected. So 15 breaths means that the recruit maneuver will last one minute and a half. And I think this is a good uh, time for this patient, so we leave it at 15 breaths. The next we need to set is the, uh, the parameters for the decrement of P trial. First is the, the first level of P that will, uh, with, with which we will start the decrement of P trial of 20 centimeters of water. Then we will select the tidal volume as during this phase, the, pay, the ventilator mode will be volume control ventilation, and we'll select it at 5 mRs per kilo in order to minimize errors in the determination of compliance, and especially not to underestimate the level of, of PEEP, or the closing pressure. So 5 mRs per kilo is now selected. And finally, we can also select the time 
we want to spend on each decorental peep step, which is also determined by the rate, and we will stay eight breaths each time. So we, we can confirm and move to the next safety screen, which gives us two important reminders. The first is that we should check once again the hemodynamic status of the patient because the, the patient has to be stable in order to proceed with the recruitment maneuver. And the second one is reminding us that we should stay at the bedside during the whole sequence because we should be there in case uh, uh, adverse events such as a drop in blood pressure occurs during the recruitment maneuver. So then we are ready to start. So we can press the start button after checking this, the condition of the patient. So we press start and the recruitment maneuver is in process. So here we have the total time it will last with all its phases. And also important is that we have a button in case uh, a pressure drop occurs or the saturation of the patient occurs, in which the ventilator or the system will immediately return to the previous settings so that we can immediately return to safe levels of pressure in order to avoid further complications in case they appear during the recruitment maneuver. Now we have reached the recruitment pressure, so the actual recruitment maneuver is starting now. We have reached 45 centimeters of water of inspiratory pressure and a peep level of 25. This means a delta pressure of 20. And this will be maintained now for one minute and a half. Now we need to pay special attention to the hemodynamic condition because this is the moment of maximum stress on the respiratory system and on the cardiovascular system. So we need to make sure that we don't have any uh, drops in blood pressure. see that now during this phase the compliance tends to drop because we are overstanding the lung with these high inspiratory pressures. The recruit maneuver is about to end and then we will immediately start with the decurrent peep trial. So it's important when the time uh, of the recruit maneuver is fulfilled is that the system immediately reduces the pressure to return to safe pressure values and then we uh, immediately minimize the stress on the lung and on the cardiovascular system. After the reduction in pressure, the hemodynamics are recovering very fast. We didn't have a, a major drop in blood pressure, around 10, 15 to 20 millimeters of mercury in total. The compliance immediately increases, and now we will start the decremental PEEP trial in order to find the closing pressure of the lung. So as we are reducing the P sequentially, you see that the compliance is increasing. We are relieving the over distension with each reduction in pressure, searching for the maximum compliance, which is in, indicates us the, uh, the initial of the most dependent lung collapse. So now the uh, compliance has started to decrease and uh, the system has been able to identify the maximum compliance, which was uh, identified at a value of 47 and that corresponds to the PEEP level of 11. So now the system will uh, recruit again with a stepwise increase in pressure and again performing the same recruit maneuver a little shorter in time that was used in the previous uh, or in the first recruitment maneuver. So after identifying the point of maximum compliance, the closing pressure of the lung. The system shows us a, uh, a comparative situation from before and after recruitment. We have the drying pressure on top, so we had a decrease in drying pressure of four centimeters of water. The compliance increased from 35, previously to performing the recruitment maneuver to 49.7, so a major increase in compliance. This is why we have a reduction in the driving pressure. The PEEP level now, Recommended is 13 centimeters of water instead of the 8 centimeters of water she had before recruitment. Tidal volume is, um, was now different because we were using 5 femmes per kilogram during the PEEP titration trial. And uh, this makes a difference of 1 milliliter per kilogram per liter body weight in total. So now these are the recommendations. So the settings is a PEEP of 13 and a driving pressure of 6. So if you accept now, the system will readjust the, the alarm settings. And we accept this around the PEEP level. And now we see that we have returned to a uh, ventilation and pressure control. We have a PEEP level of 13, that one that, that the system detected. And now we need to pay attention to the minute volume because six 
centimeters of water drying pressure is probably too low. We would like to maintain a, a total volume of 6.57 mLs per predicted body weight, so we can increase the level of pressure control to nine in order to regain sufficient alveolar ventilation on a tidal volume. How this compass indicates us that we are ventilating the patient with the long protective settings. It is very important to apply a recruit maneuver in those patients that need the recruit maneuver. And those patients, uh, we need to evaluate the response and it's essential to uh, individualize the maneuver. And in this respect, the auto SRM is a, is a very nice tool helping us to do so.